For the past four or five years, I was serving kind of as product manager on the EBMS development side and still maintain and, and uh, kind of program manager, if you want to call it, um, a role at this point. So we're still very involved in the software, but operationally being, uh, being very, um, you know, becoming very involved and, and uh, having a great amount of fun doing it as I engage even more deeply with the different groups and teams within the company. And there's just been so much energy coming to bear within the organization that it's just tremendous. It's really great. And just so many significant wins. Uh, we just had one last week. And for some of you, this, uh, you know, maybe won't mean a whole lot, but when I became product manager, product owner back five years ago, we were implementing a system of product development that uh, has really impacted the, the, our ability to deliver new changes, the testing of those changes, and it's, it's just really helped move the needle in very positive directions. And we, would, we create little tickets for every change, right? So we have this, this change, and it's going to go through the system, and so we have a process for that. And back then, um, back in 2013, we were excited when we were pushing 35 to 40 of these tickets were done within a, what we call a two-week sprint. Plan for two weeks, do it. And yesterday, we hit a milestone. We broke a record for the number of tickets completed within a two-week sprint. A few of the uh, developers are actually here, and I just want to congratulate them. Yesterday, uh, the reports came out from the sprint that ended last week, and they completed 175 tickets. So just I share that to give you a little bit of insight into the energy and the change and the, the investment that's going into EBMS, into the software, and into the future. Um, going... I mean, that's five, six times more that's happening. And you don't maybe get to see some of that excitement and, and, but from a development side, tremendous amount of excitement. And then on the products, uh, the um, IT services side, some of the products and things that we're working on there, incredibly exciting. And I, I want every one of you to get back to that back table, and it's just a black box. But I'm geeky enough to get so incredibly excited about this. I, I was up till almost midnight last night playing with that thing. It's not leadership, is it? <laughs> Leading by example. But we, we've been working for months now on, on finding and sourcing the right parts to build the ultimate EBMS performance server. Okay? What is that magic mix that's going to build a server that's just going to knock everything on the planet out. And I think we finally did it. It's just amazing. Uh, so, okay. It, it, it really is. I mean, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at comparing it to our server that supports 50 users. We have about 50 users at, at Ash Computer Center. Uh, maybe more, depending on how you count it. I'm looking at speeds that are at least triple and maybe four and five times as fast for the same process. Oh, that's Joel. He's going to talk about it. So I want, <laughs> he's going to show you some of those metrics. But this is at, and, and at a price point that's less than that server that we have. So this is not a costly box. It's just finding what works for EBMS. And I want every one of you to get by there, look at it, talk to Joel, put your $500 deposit down so you get in the queue. There's no reason for you not to buy one here today, okay? Really. We drop it in, and uh, this is your EBMS server. You, you push everything else off onto other servers, and this runs EBMS because it's going to run EBMS like nothing else will. So really excited about that, those possibilities there. Joel's going to have more details in a breakout, well, in a seminar here in a little bit. He's going to show you some of those metrics, and then later on as well. So, on the service side, um, the support, the growth we're seeing there, and the processes that we're putting in place, some new management, 
that we have on board there that I'm really excited about, and 2018 shaping up to be a year of a lot of hard work, but really excited about where the future is. But today, now, I need to try to blast through a whole bunch about EBMS, the software. I want to talk about where it is today, the features that are, that are here coming, and a little, give you a little glimpse at some of the work that's been going into it. So I want to quickly highlight our support center, the academy there. There's a lot of online tools that uh, can be used, and we want to continue to invest and build those out. We fully intend and are budgeting to do so. I want to go through some of the new features and products in EBMS and um, some payment processing things as well as a Q&A later on. So the support center, get to eaglebusinesssoftware.com slash support and uh, this is your home for all kinds of help, training, uh, details, the documentation. We also have videos online and I want uh, to encourage you to go there if you've got new folks coming in. This should be your first place to stop to introduce them to EBMS. Okay. I'm going to go through a list of uh, new features for EBMS 8.1. EBMS 8.1 is leaving the limited release stage going into the general release stage. And uh, so we're right at that cusp and as we go through this year this will be the version that uh, we'll be rolling out to uh, clients and I want to go through this list of, of features just highlighting them and um, as we go down through it pick them out see which ones may impact you and maybe a benefit to you so first of all one big change in EBMS 8.1 I want to start out with and highlight is a change to the proposal you're all familiar with the proposal dialogue how many of you use the proposal on a day-to-day -day basis okay a good portion of you getting those quotes out those estimates What's the biggest headache with the proposal screens? Anyone? No headaches. Change. <laughs> Change. Well, I've got a whole bunch of them. I, I don't know. I, I was never a fan of this screen. Um, you go into this screen, and what's the first thing you do when you go into this screen? Enter the customer ID. And what happens? It goes in the proposal ID. Whoever designed this, muscle memory, you know, you're in the sales order, you put the customer ID. You're in the vendor, you put the vendor ID. You put the ID in first. What do you do when you go to the proposal? You're supposed to tab. Muscle memory doesn't work that way, right? So, for years, horrific. What do you do? What else, what else do you see here? No, we have a customer. We have a customer ID way down there. No address. You can't see who the customer is. Oh, well, it says John Doe at the top in small letters, but really not helpful. So I have the customer, but who is this customer? Is it who's paying for it? Is it who's getting it? How do I know what tax to charge? How do I know what freight to calculate? This customer isn't helpful. And so with the EBMS 8.1, we have a completely different screen that should match the muscle memory that you've developed as you've interacted with your sales order, your, your, your uh, purchase order as well. You're coming into the screen, you're hitting the customer ID. We've brought a lot of the same functionality into this screen, the bill to, the ship to. And so now you can calculate the correct tax. You can calculate the correct freight. You know who it's going to. You know who's paying for it. And you'll see there's other um, tabs and, and info and, and information on that screen. Bringing more of it front and center, some of those buttons very handy, and a very similar um, look and feel. So the question is, how am I going to know which screen I'm in, right? Some of you were back in the DOS days and you had pink and green and purple and blue and all these different screens. Now we just got gray and they all look the same, right? Okay, it takes a little bit. Change is hard, even good change. I've managed to change and adapt, but I had to do that too. I had to change and adapt, and uh, now I'm on to it, and I know which screen I'm in, and it's all golden. But uh, really excited about the, this simple change that hopefully you'll find as a benefit as well. Another feature coming to everyone who has EBMS in, EBM, in 8.1 is this adjust counts. If you're managing inventory, you know the joy of going down through, and how did you do it? I'm not sure. Open up each individual item, 
Uh, boy, go to the count tab and then down to the adjustments button down here, pop that up and make the change and then do it, what, 10,000 times more? Right, right. Well, here we are. Let's do it as a batch. Let's get it into an Excel spreadsheet. Let's bring it into this list. Let's adjust it here. Go down through this. Listen, let's prepare the counts beforehand. Take a snapshot of it, go out and count it, import that into the system, wait a day or two, evaluate if it's right, if the values, the costs are right, so on. Business can go on, business can happen, and I can choose the date that I want all these transactions to change in, right? Of course, let's manage inventory with the adjust counts by batch feature. So you can, you can uh, take a spreadsheet and bring that in, uh, from a spreadsheet, import it in here. You can query your data, your inventory, and bring it in and uh, adjust it. Now, it's not magic. Inventory still work. Inventory, one of the toughest things, other than people were, uh, in a business, right? So, populating this list can take time. It's a process that uh, loading this list and finding the right things, but I'll tell you, it's miles ahead of what we had before. So, really excited about bringing this to everyone with EBMS. Another little feature that you may find helpful builds on some technology that we've had for a long time, and that is the ability to link in vendor catalogs, meaning catalogs from, other, uh, from our suppliers. And some time ago, a few years ago, we automated the connection or created the possibility of creating a connection to FTP servers where a, a um, vendor may push a, a file up into the cloud and then we create the connection up to that server up in the cloud and you can set up a schedule and so we have some suppliers who will do push out a file every 15 minutes now that kind of uncommon more often it's every day well you link that up you can bring that information right into ebms and so now you can build on that so that within the sales order screen if you're not stocking a lot of parts and you're special ordering a lot of products, you, can, you will very quickly know where your products, uh, where you can source your products, what the count is at the warehouse, the distributor that you're purchasing from. And it's using a very simple technology that almost everyone has. This is not some fancy integration that takes a lot of work, but most we kept it very simple on purpose because a lot of these distributors don't have big fancy systems. They're small distributors. And so they're able to push this file out. We can even provide that little cloud spot where they push it to. And they just have to have the mechanism to push that file periodically. And we can read it, bring it in, and on the sales order, right click on the item, show vendor availability and stock. It'll pop this dialog for that part and say, you can get it from all these different customers. This is their price and this is their availability with a very simple level of technology. So a small feature, in many ways, but very impactful and a lot of others to your workflow, the information that you need in front of you at any given time. Everyone with EBMS 8.1 gets that feature. Also in EBMS 8.1, we have uh, we've done a lot of enhancements when it comes to credit card processing, changes there. And one of the big ones, big small ones, is the, uh, we're, we're building the logic to allow you to manage uh, what happens during credit card payment when there's um, address or uh, uh, um, the CVV mismatches and so on. There's, there can be mismatches, zip codes and so on. So if you have integrated payment processing, in the past there were a few ways to regulate that, but it didn't always work out real well. And so you would find transactions that you were paying more for, and I see one of our, uh, um, I'll shout out to uh, Karen Hales, where's Karen? Throw your hand up, strategic partner of ours on the payment processing side, talk to her if uh, you're interested in payment, payment processing that's integrated with EBMS. Um, this, uh, this allows you to say, okay, if there's this certain mismatch, I'm going to refuse it, or whatever, and so you're not getting charged the extra fee for processing that type of transaction. Your bank issuers, the bank issuers are charged more depending on the mismatch and that gets funneled to you. And so you have to find that right balance. So it puts the control 
in your hands, allowing you as a manager to decide what your company's gonna do. Three options, just decline it, ask the clerk, or accept it without asking. So you can choose for each of these next match a little thing, but hoping again to save you some money and headache through that. Wonderful, another wonderful mention, I think, is print logging. On the sales order, vendor, uh, sorry, purchase order uh, proposal, we track whenever somebody prints a document. And so we know what was printed, who did it, and when. And we know on the sales order uh, what the last document was that was printed. Now, now, why is this helpful? Well, there's a couple of different uses. But one of them is it essentially creates a bucket. And this order, if you're into order management and needing to manage this order, you can now follow this order kind of through a process. And if you use what we call our batch processing feature, and I think that's a little bit of a bad name, I think it should be called more of an order management system. Use that, you can create different buckets. And so you could search for those or sales orders that maybe have had the confirmation sent, or that have had the packing list printed or whatever it is, create those buckets and you can, it'll help you move them through and manage those orders through your system. Not only that, but of course you have the logging feature and you can see uh, whether what's been printed or not. So again, a little thing, a big thing. And you're gonna think of ways to use this that we haven't, right? Feature here that uh, is, uh, should enhance your ability to manage those orders going through system. Okay, this has got to be one of my favorite. I don't know how you found it, but in my use of EBMS, and I am a user, okay, I am a user. This has been one of the most frustrating things for years, and that is, what's this? We no longer use it. What do we do with it? We put it in the inactive folder. What happens then? We lose all track of where this thing was, where it was categorized, Whatever, right? If you're trying to run reports on history of this here product or this group of products, you can't run reports on it because where it is it? It's off in the inactive folder. I have no sense of what's going on. So I've lost all that context. And so with EBMS 8.1, we've implemented the inactive switch, not just on inventory, but on customers and vendors and workers and, oh boy, depreciable, uh, there's more. And so now it's just a simple switch and you're able to filter them out Based on that, it not only filters it out in your reports, but it also filters out in the search list. So if you go to your search list, you know how you always showed all at the top, and then you, if you're using an active, you'd have all these gray lines interspersed in. Well, no more. The inactive folder has been completely deprecated. It's, we, we, actually, when you upgrade, we remove it if nothing's in there. Now, if there's something in there, we leave it there, and we just turn the inactive switch on for everything there. But at the bottom of your search screen, you're now going to have a switch that says show inactive items. Well, you turn that off and you can hit all up at the top and you're not going to see any of those gray. You're not searching within those inactive items. So again, little big, it's impactful. And it did take a little bit of work on the back end to make it happen. Uh, so one little switch, it was a lot of work, but incredibly delighted to be able to offer that in EBMS 8.1, the inactive switch. Switching to the manufacturing side, we've got a number of manufacturing uh, folks, businesses here, and uh, we invested quite a bit in the manufacturing and, and features in manufacturing, manufacturing batch. I'm not actually gonna show all of them here today, but there's, there's new fields and, and, and capabilities, even customizability within the manufacturing batch itself that should allow our clients to uh, easily implement features, customizations, and better workflow for managing manufacturing batches through their, uh, through their business, through the shop floor. And we've implemented this manufacturing schedule. So the manufacturing schedule will allow you to query those manufacturing batches, create that list, and not only can you open them up there, but this is something that's kind of unique in its application in EBMS. We don't see this a lot of other places, but you're able to edit. You're actually able to edit the, the values that are in the manufacturing batch without opening it. 
So you don't have to open it and change it to a different stage. You don't have to uh, change the dates. This here data is all editable here. So very, just streamlining all of that, bringing it together, being able to query it, being able to move these through the process, through the system more effectively. And we do have the ability as well to set, um, what field is it here, the status stage. You can very easily customize that to create, you could use it as workstations, you know, so now you're identifying which workstation it's at and so on. So some nice things on the manufacturing, on the manufacturing side. What we've looked at so far is all coming with EBMS 8.1 if you have the module, if you have the manufacturing module. Uh, in Active Switch, everyone gets. I should have been defining some of that. Uh, print logging, everyone gets. This here is if you have integrated kit payment processing. I think everything we've looked at, you'll all see uh, very well. So, uh, another feature, another, uh, this one's pretty big, is uh, in intercompany inventory sync. We have some clients who have multiple company databases but wish to maintain the same inventory in each, the, the same SKUs in each. Of course, it's different history and so on. Uh, but we have a mechanism that will allow you to create a product, import a product in one system, and within 10, 15 seconds, it's going to show up in all your other company databases. Okay? You change a price, it'll filter down through all your other company databases. So this, is, this one's very involved, um, very complex but incredibly valuable when you think of trying to maintain so many different inventory databases when you are managing multiple companies. So that's a big one. Uh, I won't go into detail here on that beyond, beyond that piece, but know that it's available and um, a great feature. EBMS 8.1. Uh, we went into that. It's been, there's been a lot of effort gone into it. And one of the uh, most important focuses was on the EBMS admin. Now, I know I'm talking to quite a few of them here. Those folks that manage EBMS, right? And the EBMS server manager is a completely new program that lives on your data server. And the way that the workstations connect to that server in EBMS 8.1 completely changes. No longer will the user be able to connect to, you know, add company. They go to log in, it says add company. They're not going to see that. In fact, you as EBMS admin are going to decide what they see. Now, they'll have to put in the server name, put in the server name, and their client workstation will look to the server to see what companies they can view, they can see. We have many clients who have multiple company databases, and this just helps you manage because it's likely that not all, of, um, not all of your workers need access to all of the companies, right? Things like that. So it allows you to manage that. There's all kinds of other uh, troubleshooting and uh, automated tooling built into the server manager. How many times do you come in after a weekend, electrical storm, the it's, EBMS has gone down, can't start, disconnected, right? We've all experienced it, absolutely. So with this design, when that server spools back up, it's actually going to restart the service. And it'll send you, the EBMS admin, an email saying, hey, we had a problem over the weekend. Things went down hard. You might want to you know, run the utilities, re-index at your convenience, whatever. But we're back up and with the help of the software. And the troubleshooting feature I, I mentioned briefly earlier, there are problems. You run it, and it solves, well, I'm not going to say 100%, but a lot of the a lot of the problems that you're going to experience with connection issues and firewall. You run that, it'll set up firewall exceptions, it'll open, you know, open those ports. It, it's, it's dealing with a lot of, of those things for you. So great stuff with EBMS Server Manager. And to build on that even further, and what gets me even more excited, is the ability for the server to update the workstations. So you no longer need to walk around to each individual workstation when there's an EBMS update. Once the server is updated, the workstation, when the user goes to log in, he'll get a message saying, hey, there's been an update. You want to update now? Well, of course. 
Two minutes later, his system's updated, right? So you're not having to go around to every workstation keeping them updated. Uh, and we're building on that even further where we're delivering updates to you electronically. So we're going to trigger the sending of an update. It's going to send electronically. This system is going to check to see if there's an update available for you. And it'll send you an email saying there's an update available for EBMS. And you can set a window of time when you want to down, have it downloaded. It'll download and it'll show up on your server. We're getting away from, you know, disks and, and transferring files and things like that. That's all happening um, electronically and uh, as a service looks and checks for uh, updates and so on. So we're really trying to speed up the uh, delivery time, the ability to deliver and automate that. The EBMS Server Manager is one of the, the uh, features of EBMS 8.1 that I'm likely most excited about as I think of uh, administrating EBMS and the ease and so on. It is a transition, it is a change, um, a whole new way of doing things. And so as you're switching over, uh, we've, we've seen some disruption with it. Once it's in place, it's been working very, very well. I want to talk about the SQL mirror. And this is a new feature, a new module available. You have to purchase it. Um, I guess I should, yeah, Intercompany Sync is a new module as well. Everyone gets the UBMS server manager once they go to 8.1. The SQL mirror is essentially what it sounds like. You set up a server with uh, an SQL server software on it. EBMS is able to, uh, you, you specify on the data end what data tables you want to push over to SQL and it will populate in real time the SQL database. Now, how is this helpful? Well, the native um, database that EBMS uses has some pros and has some cons. And SQL has some real pros. And if you dig deep enough, some cons as well. But it's a very robust database engine, SQL. And so if you have a lot of data, and you want that data to tell you stories, like you should be, right? You're going to want to get that data, and you're going to want to slice and dice that data. How are you going to do that? You're not going to do that with the EBMS data you're going to do that with SQL. So this is the power of the SQL mirror. I see is when creating dashboards, creating those reports, slicing and dicing that data. And you can use any business intelligence tool you wish to connect to that SQL server and pull that data and generate the stories that you want it to tell you. Okay? This is what business management is all about. Yeah, it's getting the data in, but what are you going to do with it? You're going to leverage it, you're going to use it, and you're going to build those dashboards. I personally have found this incredibly valuable in my new role as COO. As I build out these dashboards for each of the teams, as I work with the managers, what KPIs do we have to build out here? What, what do we need to understand? What needs to change? What are our trends? Where are we going? Getting this history and making it, leveraging it for my use. So you set up, you get the SQL mirror, you set up your SQL server, and I like Power BI, okay, Microsoft product, working incredibly well. I think it's this, somebody just told me, second biggest or biggest business intelligence tool. It's right up there in usage, um, and Microsoft's throwing a lot behind it, incredibly valuable. I'm getting data out and in a usable format on my phone, on my computer, on my tablet, online, wherever I go. I can get that data. And then there may be some uses for the SQL mirror operationally as well. If you have some other production software that you need to load in, um, I think of manufacturing, for example, you might have uh, systems and software that needs to read order entry or manufacturing batch data, whatever it might be, um, you can uh, use that to read this. So it's not, it's not write, writing, it's reading and reading in very powerful ways. It's incredibly fast at pulling lots of data.
shifting gears a little bit, we're rolling out a product now. It's, uh, uh, we're looking uh, for some limited release partners. And uh, so it'll be later this year. Maybe some of you saw. Maybe you're totally confused. You got an email saying, now you can go online and, uh, and uh, pay online. Now, what's this mean? You try to log in. And, um, so we're, we are our own beta customer, right? So we've got to kind of test these things first. We think it's ready, and, and uh, we, we're a user uh, Dash Computer Center. So here's a login page. And uh, a company by the name of My Mobile Pantry bought some products from Ash Computer Center. And um, they're able to log in and see what they bought. They're able to pay online for that, what's outstanding. So this is very much a B2B tool, right? It can be used in conjunction with e-commerce, um, kind of the retail retailer model, but this really is a B2B tool. So I'll, customer can log in, see the previous orders, hit reorder. You think of Amazon, I think you understand, except now you can have your sales orders listed there, you can have your invoice listed there, you can, um, no matter how it's generated, whether it was generated online, whether it was generated in-house, and this is in real time. This is querying the EBMS database in real time. Right now, it's, uh, we're, we're making it, uh, like I said, we're, we're looking at going limited release with it through the coming months and then generally release hopefully in Q3. Right now, it's usable uh, with e-commerce, so you have to have an e-commerce website. But what we have our vision on goes way beyond that. And with very little setup, we will be enabling this so that even without an e-commerce site, you will have this capability. You will be able to send a link out to your customers in an email potentially that they can click on. They'll direct them to a portal or they put in their username and password and they'll be able to pay the invoices that are outstanding. So a very simple payment portal, and it's not going to have the history side of it, but a payment portal where they can pay online. They can see the invoices that are outstanding, they can see what's on those invoices, and then pay them. And so we're really excited about that. Used in conjunction with our CRM and AutoSend, and there'll be more about that this afternoon and some of the breakouts, you could send out a, much like we did using AutoSend, here's your statement, Here's the link, click on it. They can log in and they can pay it there. So really trying to drive down the, uh, that uh, receivable, your receivables, helping you keep their AR low. So really excite, excited about the e-business side and the B2B uh, aspect that we're bringing to it. There's a lot more on a website. Go to our support page like we started with and you will see uh, the 8.1 enhancements. Now, if you go, oh, oh, it's gonna, I thought I knew which slide was next. Uh, Verifone Point. I did want to touch on Verifone Point and our current status with this. We've talked about it now for the what? Last five years? Likely in this forum and here. And um, supply chain had been a real issue. Supply chain is still not great. We're seeing some improvements there. Uh, configuration of devices has been very um, difficult. The devices as they come to us, their configuration has been inconsistent. And so we're having to go down through hundreds of configuration settings, sorting them out. We're rolling this out. We have, and I didn't count how many, but we do have a nice number of folks who are using it and using it successfully. So if you're in payment processing, uh, the doors are starting to finally open up more, and we have folks successfully using it. So there is hope, and there is um, EMV will be coming to uh, EBMS and to you as we roll through the year, and we're going to keep, keep working on uh, rolling that out. I want to talk about my time. This is something that I talked about here as well, and I want to give you a status update. It's uh, an app that allows you to in real time, interact with the tasks within um, EBMS. And so you can create tasks in EBMS and they'll show up in the MyTime app. It's a Windows Store app that'll run on your laptop, it'll run on a tablet, 
And if you're lucky enough to have a Windows phone and haven't yet switched to an Android phone, um, you can use. So it's only Windows. Okay, some people knew that inside one. I was a diehard Microsoft guy and finally after two months gave it up and went with Android. So anyway, this software will only run uh, on, my, on Windows 10. Okay, so you choose the form factor. Windows has it. And if you get one of these, this tablet even has a SIM, you can put a SIM card in it. So if you want to run uh, that. So um, depending on your use, a small tablet may just be perfect. I think it's about the perfect form factor. And uh, technicians, HVAC, kiosk mode and shop floor, tracking time. If you want to know more about it, there's some breakouts this afternoon I'll be leading and we'll be getting into that in greater depth then. My Time app. And uh, some great promotions today. The update, it's solidly um, in beta, moving into limited release and uh, anxious uh, about going into general release here in Q3. Okay, uh, we'll be getting into that a little later on. And so, in the last few minutes, I always leave the last two minutes for the future of EBMS. Oh, can't talk about it. Okay. Um, well, I wanted to talk about EBMS 8.2. We've been talking about EBMS 8.1. EBMS 8.2 is um, we're getting ready this, uh, to go into limited release in the next few months. And uh, here's just a couple of features you're going to find in EBMS 8.2. And that is the um, one that's been asked for many times, is the ability to link a task to, to a serialized item add to cost batch. Ouch, that was a big mouthful. But if you've experienced the pain, you know exactly what that is, right? You're a service company, you own products, maybe it's inventory, and you want to expense the labor, the staging, the service, whatever it is, directly to that serialized item, you can now do that by linking the batch directly to that add to cost batch directly to a task. Okay? If you're in the rental business, you can now expense rental contracts to jobs, job costing. Little unique model, but pretty cool. I own a product, I'm renting it out to a job, and I can expense that to the job myself. So kind of almost a similar concept as what the other one was. And we have a USPS, domestic shipping rate integration now. So if you're using USPS and you want to pull real-time rate, get real-time rate quotes, you can do that. Um, we've included even more enhancements to that EBMS server manager, won't get into that. Uh, task pipeline and phases. This one I think is incredibly impactful, and especially if you use EBMS tasks as a contact management tool, kind of a CRM tool. Uh, you can now build that funnel. I believe they're going to talk about that in the CRM class later on. And then this is the biggest one of all, and that is we will be releasing a RESTful API. Now what's that mean? That means you can not only read EBMS data, but you can write to it. And we're really excited about this. This is our, the big one we're rolling out with EBMS 8.2. And I have an actual sample, and I was, thought if I had time I'd try to demonstrate this, and I don't think I will. But if I took this URL here and the content below it and pasted it into my browser and hit enter, it would create a task within EBMS with that data in it. The note field, this is the type of task, the priority is normal, the note says, wow, this task was created using only a browser. The customer ID, and then in the description, testing task creation from a browser. So I could create a task from a browser with just that string. I could create an inventory item. I could create a customer record. I could create a sales order. And I can read it. So the RESTful API is something we have been spending, frankly, the technology has taken us years to build. And in 2018, we're going to be rolling this out. And we're incredibly excited about it. Used in conjunction with the SQL mirror, you have powerful tools at your fingertips to engage with EBMS and the data, integrating with other tools and so on. The SQL mirror brings incredible read speeds, and this will allow you to write very quickly, efficiently, and easily.
to the EBMS database. We don't know where this is all going to go, but we're incredibly excited about the future. And going even beyond this, as we look down the road, as we look at apps and so on, we are working on iOS, we're working on Android. There'll be more information coming out about that as we go through the year. Uh, hoping by the end of the year to have our have a uh, Android iOS app um, with it, more of a CRM contact management app and a building from there. So a lot of investment going on, a lot of exciting energy. We really appreciate the partnership. And before we go, if nothing else was free today, I always like to leave you with my three standard free tips, right? Some of you have been here year after year, you know them. But uh, remember, you can always right click on that row of tabs and choose open to the last open tab. You don't have to always have it going to the general tab first. And this will remember what tab you had open in inventory, customers, whatever, last. So if you're doing the same function, thinking inventory counts, it can open always to that count tab. If you right click on it and say open, you can, there's two options. Open to this tab or open to the last open tab and we'll remember which one you're in last. Very simple but hidden. And that'll save you lots of clicks and lots of time. The other one is keyboard shortcuts. In our documentation, go in and look for your keyboard shortcuts. Use that as your keyword. Search for that, keyboard shortcuts. And the one that I like the most is control enter. Because in the sales order, in the proposal, you just hit, you put in the customer ID, you hit control enter, and you're immediately ready to start typing in products down the detail list. It takes you right down to that list. So you don't have to go move the mouse and click down there. Get to know your keyboard. It's your greatest friend when it comes to ERP. At this point, we'll see where that all goes. And of course, Control S saves documents as well. So lots, of t uh, lots to keep growing on, lots to learn, lots of change. And where are we at with time? I, I think I lost track. Time's up. Time's up? They can't, they can't interrogate me? <laughs> yes, actually, we're going to take a break. And Nathaniel will be available over here in the corner so you can come and see him one to one. All right. All right. Well, thank you all uh, for coming. And I'm really excited about our partnership and continuing to grow with you. So thank you. I'll turn it back to Russ.